Okay. 
Remember, they uh, moved out of uh, a ride yesterday, and he uh, took a big nose dive off the going about 15 20 miles an hour. Had a minor concussion, we had to take him to urgent care. Um, got some scars on his face, his arms, and his leg. Um, I'll be honest, it was quite terrifying. I'm glad he's wearing a helmet because um, he just kept saying it was it's repeating over and over. I, I just don't understand, it's like a nightmare. Um, for about an hour, he didn't remember any of the day. Um, really scary and, and real traumatizing as a parent. Um, just pray that, that God watch over him and protect him. It's hard to see your kids suffer. I'm scared and terrified of him. He was, he was utterly terrified. So just, just remember him and remember our family. Somebody else?
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Jesus was accused and it's all he would be killed so he tried to wash his hands but Jesus put that blood be spilled on my body I'm glad to know that on my heart his blood is full and yet you trust in
Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have, have some. And I appreciate that. If you got your Bible, we'll go today into Acts chapter 4. We'll give you what's on our heart this morning. Uh, I definitely desire your prayers. We can just get out what's on our heart. But and, uh, the harder you pray, the sweeter it be. Easier to be to preach. Praise but here's long. So Acts chapter 4, and uh, we're going to start reading around the 12th verse. Maybe read about three verses of scripture, take a thought, and then we'll go from there. So Acts chapter 4, starting around verse number 12. The Bible said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them, and this is where we really want to take our thought today, that they had been with Jesus. Yeah, praise God. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against him. That's where we'll stop reading. Appreciate you standing reverence to God's word. Appreciate everyone that's uh, been praying for the service today. Appreciate the opportunity that we have. Yeah. Uh, but if we can preach today, we'd like to take that uh, latter part of that 13th verse that they have been with Jesus. Yeah. And I'd like to preach the Lord would allow us, how do we know that we've been with Jesus? Amen. Come on, and, bless uh, the Lord. Uh, if we took time to spend time with one bless another, uh, on a regular basis, there would be traits from each one of us that would rub off Amen. on one another. Uh -huh. Father to son, son to father, friend to foe, all those different things. When you're surrounded by those folks and you're around them on a regular basis, you rub off on them. Mm -hmm. That's just natural. There's parts of me uh, that I can truly say I have that are my father's. Uh, Bless him. Have your way, Jesus. Some traits I don't want to have, other traits I do. Yeah, come on, bless him, Lord. You get around my kids very long, you'll know that they're my kids because they <laughs> have God. my traits. Amen. Bless they have my wife's traits. Bless you'll definitely be able to look at them and say, those are Benny's. Yeah, praise God. Bless him, Lord. But I want you to look way past that. Yeah. Right. And I want you to look who my father really is. Amen. That's right. And I want you to look past the Benny name, and I want you to see my father. Well, who he really is. Yeah, come on. I'm not talking about Harvey Benny, who's in a nursing home this morning. I'm talking about Jesus, who loves me and died for me and gave me the part thing that I have today. And I want to bear the traits of my Father. I want the world to be able to see Him through me. Not because I, I'm anybody special, Paul, or that I want them to look upon me. Uh, but I'll say this in the third chapter. Uh, we find Peter and John as they go up to the temple. Uh, the Lord, they go up there to the temple as they go to enter in. Uh, to the temple there, they pass through a gate. I uh, call beautiful and they see a man uh, who was laying, laying there. Uh, and that man was begging and he needed help uh, uh, for his life. Uh, uh, was a shambles. Uh, it was ruined, Lord. Uh, uh, because uh, he relied on everybody else uh, uh, to get him where uh, he needed to be. Uh, uh, but this day, uh, uh, something different uh, uh, was going to happen uh, uh, to this man. He wasn't expecting that. He was expecting maybe a quarter, maybe a dime, a little gold piece to get him through the next moment. But I'm glad when God shows up on the scene, he'll take you farther than you ever imagined that you can go. So here is they're walking out. The Bible says that Peter looked at him and said, look on us. So in other words, when he looked over at this man, he knew he had something down on the inside of him. On oh, that dwelt there. Oh, that it wasn't about him, Lord. Oh, but it was about this man, Jesus. And I'm glad it's still that way today. It's not about you and I. It's not about how good of a person that we are. I believe in leading a good life, friend. I believe you should do good to your neighbors. I believe you should love those that persecute you. But if it's just me and you, I will fail. 
I got plenty on the inside. I live through us. I the world will see. Our Father. Now listen, as Peter and James went up there and they looked at this man, I no doubt he's shaking the cup, baby, and looking at him. I want him to drop some alms in, the Bible said. I just something that would help him. I but Peter and John didn't have money to give him. And that's what they said. They said, look on us. And when they looked on him, he said, listen, I silver and gold, I don't have none. But what I do have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll rise up and walk. I'm glad today that that man jumped up and the Bible said immediately he felt strength in his legs. I'm going to tell you when Jesus comes into your life, there's a change. There's a change. And it's not something that's got to wait for months to get it. It's not a 12 step program to get it. But it's an instant change. Because that's how God works. God doesn't work in an installment plan. That's how we work. God says, I'll give you everything that you need the moment you trust me with your whole heart. Now, listen, the Bible said that that man jumped up leaping. And he went into the temple with them. Now all the people in the temple just saw this man. I laid it out in front of the temple, Lord. Oh, they saw him. Oh, they seen him every week. Oh, they seen him every day. It was the lame man. Oh, they couldn't get there unless somebody else put him there. Oh, but now this man looks different. Oh, now there's something different about him. It wasn't the fact that he could walk alone. It wasn't the fact that he was leaping for joy. But they knew. Oh, there has been a change in him. Amen. Listen, the day you get saved, the world will know that there's been a change in your life. Yes. The day that you get saved, it's great to tell the church, don't get me wrong. Uh, you should tell the church uh, when God does something for you. Uh, I believe it gets sweeter uh, the moment you proclaim it. Uh, I believe it fulfills itself uh, the moment you say uh, that Jesus saved me. Uh, but whether you say anything or not, Jared, uh, I believe the church, uh, they know. Uh, why? Because His Spirit, uh, it bears witness uh, with another. I'm never telling you you got saved. You can ask me all day long, and if you ask me, I'm going to tell you no. You say, well, why would you say that? Because I don't want you to count your salvation in me. Yeah. Uh, because if you're counting on right. Kevin saying that I told you you got it, uh, then I can make a mistake, uh, and I can yeah. fail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when God yeah. gives it to you, uh, uh, there's no failure in that. Right. Uh, uh, there's no mistake in that. Right. Uh, only him that receiveth uh, yeah. and him that giveth uh, uh, knows it. That's right. yeah. So listen, Blessing. immediately when this happened, there was an uproar in the church. Right. Immediately when this happened, the church folks, they got all excited. Yeah, come on. Those folks that had lived their lives the way they wanted to live it, those folks that did things the way that they felt it should have been done and left God out of it, uh, they said, wait a minute, this ain't right. Uh, uh, we can't have these guys going around saying stuff uh, and getting people up uh, and having this man run around uh, and say that he was saved by Jesus. Uh, uh, we can't do this. Uh, uh, we got to put a stop to this. Uh, uh, that's just the way the world is today, church. Uh, if you truly got uh, uh, what you say you got, uh, uh, they don't want to hear it. Uh, uh, they don't want to know it. Uh, uh, but I want to charge you. I say it the more, I say it the louder, and let them know what God has done. Peter and John never stopped. They never gave up. They never uh, stood back. But I like what they said. The Bible said, in this beginning part of the fourth chapter, it said that Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and as many that were of the kindred of the high priests, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And the seventh verse it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power 
Well, by what name have you done this? Man, that's a pretty bold statement. Uh, we can't deny what's happened. Uh, this man has been lame. We know it. Uh, but by what power have you done this? How have you done this? Uh, well, that's just like the world today when something good happens. Uh, yeah. uh, just they want to ask you why yeah. and what you did to receive this. Yeah. How did you make it happen? Yeah. Uh, church, I want you to understand this today. Yeah. If the grace of God shines upon us day by day yeah. and he allows good things to happen yeah. in our lives, which he does, yeah. uh, you didn't do nothing. Yeah. It's by his grace yeah. and his mercy yeah. uh, that we even have the strength yeah. uh, to breathe today. Well, when they said, we want to know by what power or by what name have you done this. Now listen to Peter. And Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the key. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. You say, well, oh, that's, that's Peter. He's a preacher. Oh, that's why he was filled with the Holy Ghost. I beg to differ with you, friend. If you're saved by the grace of God, you are filled uh, with the Holy Ghost inside of you. Uh, now, no, ladies, I want to tell you, uh, you're not going to preach. Uh, that's not biblical. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, the Holy Ghost of God is inside of you. Uh, and you've got power in your testimony and the ability that God gives you. Tell you different. Bless the Lord. Listen, Bless then Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, Ye rulers of this people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed uh, to this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. In other words, don't look at me. I didn't do anything. I didn't do a single thing. I just happened to be at the place and became the vessel for God's tool. I became the vessel for his usage uh, at that very moment. Uh, uh, church, I want you to get this. Uh, every time I get up to preach, uh, I say, God, you're the preacher. Uh, I'm just your vessel. Uh, if there's any preaching done today, uh, I use my mouth. Uh, uh, take me and use me as your vessel. Uh, uh, but if it's a failure, God, it's me. Uh, it's got nothing to do with you. Uh, I'm just flesh and bone. Uh, uh, but every time uh, he shows up, uh, and he shows out, and he's gone. Amen. Listen, he said, Be it known unto you and all the people of Israel that by this name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand where he is. Yeah. I want you to understand, I've got nothing to do with this. He asked me for alms. I said, Silver and gold have another. But what I do have, I'll give you the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> what I've got is Jesus. Amen. I don't own a mansion on a thousand hills. I don't own the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't own the finest cars in the hunt. I don't have the most spectacular job in the world of my man's eyes. Uh, but I'll say this, I have what I have, and I am what I am uh, by the grace of God. Uh, if it wasn't for him, uh, I am nothing. Uh, and that's what Peter said. Uh, it ain't about me. Uh, quit asking me. It's the same man uh, that you crucified. It's the same one you want to do away with. It's the same one that you said was not the ruler. That you said was not king of kings. This is he. And oh, by the way, you thought you killed him. <laughs> you put him on the cross, but he gave up the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't take his life, he laid it down. Yeah. But I want to remind you, that same man that went in the tomb, he didn't come out that way. Yeah. He came out victorious. Yeah. And he's alive today, sitting at the right hand of his father. Yeah. But listen, if anything's done today, church, yeah. it's not because of all the brands. Yeah. It's not because of the traits yeah. that we all bear. Yeah. It's because of him. That's right. Man. Listen. Bless you said, God hath raised him from the dead. Even by him doth this man stand here before you hold. Mm -hmm. This is a stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head 
of the corner. This is where you build your foundation. That's what Peter began to tell them. Listen, everyone knows that when you go to build something, your building is only as strong as good your foundation. And your foundation is only as strong as the corner that is started on. And this is the chief cornerstone. That man that you tried to kill, he's the one who did it. Now listen, the men immediately, as the Bible says, as it goes on later in that chapter, they said, we need to punish him. We need to whip him. We need to persecute him. We need to lock them away. Bless him, Lord. <laughs> but somebody said, wait a minute. How can we do that? Is it proven that this man has been made whole? We can't deny that. You can lock them away. You can beat them. But it don't change the fact that this man is still walking. It don't change the fact that this man leaped up and went into the church of God and said, I, I am here and been made whole I'm by this man Jesus. If we're going to do it, we got to do it to them all. And they said, I'll tell you what we'll do. I will just charge them. I don't you claim him. I don't you say his name. I don't do anything in his name anymore. And they called him commanded them to not speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in thy sight. In the sight of God to hearken unto you more than to God judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In other words, these men said, I'm going to tell you what he did for me. I know who this man Jesus is. I walked with him. I saw him raise the sick. Bring those that were dead back to life. Touch all those that needed help from their infirmities. Drive out the evil spirits. And make a man sit at his feet that his family couldn't even stand him. Let's see I don't care what you say. Uh -huh. I know what he did for me. Amen. Amen. And these people looked at them and condemned him and said, you've been with him. <laughs> now this is the same man that as they led Jesus away they looked at him and said, you were with him. Uh -huh. He said, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Yeah. No, I know you were with him. Your speech betrayed a thing. No, I was not there. I don't know that man. And finally, as he wore by the fire, another damsel looked at him and said, you are one of them. The Bible said he cursed. Yeah. Go. Yeah. He said, I was not. But the Bible said Bless him, Lord. that immediately the cock crowed. Uh -huh. yeah. Bless him. Just as Jesus said, mm -hmm. Peter, before this runs out, and the day rises, before the cock croweth, you will not be thrice. Yeah. Oh no, Lord, I'll go with you always. Yeah. I'll be there, Lord. And the Bible says that Peter looked. And Jesus looked at him and fastened his eyes upon him. And Peter went out and wept bitterly because he knew what he had done. But let me say this. Peter didn't stay there. Church, don't stay there. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to fail. You're going to falter and things are going to come your way. Like you're going to react before you think. Like you're going to react before you pray. Like you're going to react before God comes out. I'm going to ask you, don't stay there. Amen. Don't stay there. Get on your knees. Bless and say, God, I need you. God, I need you. And here we find Peter standing bold. On the day of Pentecost, he's the first to stand and preach. Bless him. Uh -huh. On this day, he's the first to walk into the temple. 
I delayed sitting many days up in the upper room. He's the first to walk in and say, hey, don't look at me. This is all what God's done. Don't you look upon me. I've got no power. This is all him. Listen, Peter bore some traits of Christ. There was love and compassion in his eyes when I looked at that man. We live in a world today, Ron, that looks down at everybody. If you're not at my stature, if you're not where I think you should be, it's already happening because you're already looking and judging. You might not say anything with this word, but with the heart. The Bible says a multitude of words are spoke. Yeah. Huh? In other words, it's crying out from within you. Yeah. That ain't me. I'm sorry, you down your luck. <laughs> that ain't me. Amen. You've all been there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Peter and John had compassion on this man. Instead of walking by and giving him a little coin, like everybody had done in the way all that man's life, they looked at him and they stopped. I wonder, Ron, how many times that Peter can recall back to the moment when that blind man yelled out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me! Yes. Have mercy on me! And Jesus stopped. And he turned and he looked at him. The woman with the issue of blood reached up, touched the heel of his garment. He felt the virtue flow. He stopped. And he said, who's touched me? Do not think for one second, Peter, recall those times. He said, you know what? I need to give him time. Lord, you give me time. Lord, you give me second chances. Lord, you loved me when I was unlovable. I've got nothing to give him. But what can I give him, Lord? I can almost hear the Lord saying, just give him me. Mm -hmm. Just give him me. You ain't got nothing in your pockets. And if you did, it's only going to help for a little bit. I want to heal a soul. Just give him me. Yeah. So we're going to have a nun. But such as I have, I want to give you what I got. Yeah. Let me tell you about Jesus. Yeah. Jesus says, rise up and walk. Yeah. Jesus told that man to take us to bed. He got out here. Send no more. Take it up go. He didn't say, hey, let me touch you for a little bit. Let me massage on you. Make sure you're healed and your bones are strengthened. He said, just take up your bed and go. Send no more. When Jesus touches you, you know it. Amen. When Jesus came by that man that day, he said, let me tell you about this man, Jesus. In his name, rise and walk. And immediately, he felt it happening where he could leap up and feel the bones shaking. This is a man that had walked. This is a man who didn't know what that feeling was. But now he had it, Ron. You know what he said? Let's go to church. Ain't much for people, Ron, that say that I got saved, but then they never heard from the Lord in the house. Mm -hmm. When I got saved, he placed me in a body. Yes. And he gave me a word. At 10 years old, he gave me a job. He said, well, what was that job? Did you have a title? Nope. It was a seat filler. Uh -huh. It was a prayer. It was to be there when they sung them songs. It seemed wrong. That probably for six months or better. After the Lord saved me, that I came into church and I sat there being raised in church my whole life. I heard every one of them songs for the first time. I heard every one of those songs that just seemed, how did I miss that message? How did I not understand what that song meant? And he just went over, fill me. And I would just find myself sitting there as a 10-year-old boy, Rod, and tears would well up in my eyes when I, they would sing them songs about amazing grace. 
I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. Yeah. A beautiful place, Bless of mansions you. fair and skies ever bright. Bless you. happiest time of my life. She's cleaning the house like a man. <laughs> Mother be nesting instant, kicking in. She's like, yeah, I can't, I guess I better go. She's like, at that time, what? What? I said, fine, okay. I finally ran in the car, got the car, drove off. I didn't realize I forgot her. <laughs> Bless you. Mother was ready. Dad was ready. Birth had to be ready. The child had to be ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bless him. It grows for nine months. Yeah. Getting all the nutrients it needs mm -hmm. to be fully developed to come forth. Yeah. Church, because we ain't seen him saved yet, doesn't mean that God's not fully working. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 Bless them. So when they're ready, and the bride says, Bush, and the spirit says, Bush, uh -huh. and the father says, I'm ready. Yeah. Bless I'm them. ready. I've been waiting. I've been dealing. And I know it's about to happen. Amen. Praise God. You can't fight it when that takes place. Amen. They try to slow things down. We just heard that. Slow things down. Let it, let it happen a little bit. God says, hey, 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 don't slow nothing down. You let it be the way that it needs to be. I'll fully mature, just wait as to go. I've seen churches try to stop the birth. Sure. As old or too young. They don't quite comprehend it yet. They don't understand. Well, First, let me give them this class so that they understand what it means when they get saved to be a church member. They don't need to be a church member right now. Right. They need to be saved by the grace of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. We have to place them in a church that we can teach them. That's right. Sometimes we can confuse all that. Yeah. Peter and John said, I just want to be like that. Listen, I've heard somebody say, I've come to an end. Bless John didn't say a word. It's all Peter. John didn't do anything. Peter's the one that spoke. You used to go back to that scripture and go, you know what, you're right. John didn't do anything. He just kind of was long for the ride. <laughs> Peter was the one that did all the work, said everything. Did you 
ever stop and think for a moment? Well, Peter was the one speaking to the man that John wasn't over here like this. That's right. Bless him. God, you know what needs to be done. Father, I love you and I thank you for this opportunity that you're giving us again. Bless you. God, I pray that you will show up in like you always do. We forget those things, church. Right. You have got a job. Whether you've got a title in church or not, you've got a job. That's to pray. Right. To pray and say, God, when it's your time and it's your place and it's your moment, help us to be ready. Bless you. Praise God. I want to tell you, these folks, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. In other words, they weren't highfalutin. They weren't up in the synagogues, given all things about the law and all the traditions. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I don't want to be the smartest person in the world. I don't want to be the most educated about this. I want to know everything you'll let me know. But it's not my job to know all these things. Some things I'm going to know on the other side. Amen. Yeah. Some things I'm going to look through that glass darkly. Mm -hmm. But one day I'll know it all. Face to right. face. Bless them. And it tells us, don't get into those genealogies and those... <laughs> foolish tales and all those things that are now profit of nothing. Mm -hmm. Stick with what God says. That's right. Let him guide you and direct you and let him show up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that's let him show up. So that's the message today. Praise God. Thank you. Does the world know that you have been with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. If they don't see him in your life, if they don't hear him in your if they don't see him in your walk, if they don't see him in your examples, then they're seeing you and not him. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Well, that's I want to say this. We all make mistakes. We all fail. It's what we do with those failures. It's what we do with those mistakes. We can let them drag us down, or we can get back up and say, God, I'm really cute. So I'm going to ask you today. If there's anything standing between you and God and letting this world see you and know that you are his king, you get it out of way this morning. And if you're here lost without God and you want to know what it's like to be with Jesus, come. Come. Try it. Experience it for yourself. And I promise you, you'll never regret it. Are ready to come get a verse of song? loves you. Church loves you. Your family loves you.